Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lessons from the Ridge. How are you doing, everybody? 12 people in here. Awesome. Come on in, everybody. Oh, I understand. Morgan's Happy Place. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Morgan's Happy Place needs our prayers. She's uh, going in for a double mastectomy, uh, but she's got this. Prayers lifting her up for strength. Absolutely. Morgan's Happy Place. Jandera, good morning. MT Homestead, look at there. Hope you had a good trip, Mike and Terry. Hope you had a good trip. They went to, <coughs> excuse me, they went to Sulphur, Sulphur, Oklahoma, to a first annual meetup there. Hope you all had a wonderful time. Love watching the lives. Lila Newton's in here. Good morning. Good morning. Linda Wall. Oh, my good, good friend, Linda Wall. I think Tom and Rhonda was in here just a little bit ago. I think uh, Kristen, Lazy Sea Homestead, Mary Ranch, of course, Silhouette Park Farms, this in and out. Let's see who else we got here. Uh, make sure I don't miss him. Barb Halverson, hope you're doing well this morning. And let's see. Um, I think there was Ernie, of course. Ernie, how could I forget Ernie? Never forget Ernie. Love us uh, some Ernie Hatmaker. I just saw her yesterday. I was checking the hives. The Hatmaker Colony. Yeah, Queen Ernie. Hidden Pines Homestead. Hope you're doing well this morning. Caitlin. Caitlin is dropping in and out. She's up in Canada. So good to see Caitlin in here this morning. Come on, MMT Homestead. Corey and Cynthia Davis is in the house. Y'all check out my Homesteading Northern Michigan shirt. Look at the colors on the... Uh, this is the state of Michigan. And uh, this is Jason's uh, logo. And uh, look at the beautiful Aurora Borealis above the pine trees. Isn't that beautiful? That's the state of Michigan. So, homesteading northern Michigan. Let's see here. Buckeye Prepper, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Our marketing helped you out yesterday. Well, I appreciate that, MT. You guys are always good for that. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Mary Ranch, me too. I love this shirt. So if you see Jason from Homesteading Northern Michigan, tell him Tim looked awful sharp in that Homesteading Northern Michigan shirt. Oh, man, what a weekend so far. I know lots been going on. Uh, Dooley's Michigan Homestead. Yeah, awesome, Michigan. You like that, huh? Uh, man, I was outside all day yesterday and Starla was outside. I got I got. Almost uh, heat exhaustion yesterday. Good morning, Heather Hopper. Uh, got up in the morning, drank a little coffee, and then went right outside and uh, started working, uh, working the bees. And uh, with five colonies now, that's a lot of work. Uh, did a bunch of stuff. I'll have videos out soon. Sunny's Place, Emma. Buenos dias, amigos. Diane Phoenix, good morning. Dooley's Michigan Homestead. <coughs> um so, yeah, worked a couple hours on that, came in, uh, whew, woozy, got me a little sandwich and uh, went back out. And we did a, a, a mobile members only live stream. And for the members that were here, thank you very much. Um, I went back and watched it and the video quality wasn't quite a, as, a, a, as clear as I expected because the scenery and the mushrooms and the rocks and the, the log home. You know, when I got into the uh, Wi-Fi, you know, it, it got better. But uh, I was hoping the video quality had been a little better. Of course, that little that little stunt at the end, you know, the members only got to see the little stunt at the end. And, of course, bees chasing me. <laughs> the bees. Yes. Yeah, Not going to talk about the details. You're right, Lila. Tundra Jason. Good morning, my patriot friend. Yeah, we had a we had a, a special members only uh, uh, rendezvous yesterday and uh, got to see a lot of cool things that a lot of people won't get to see for a long time. So. Thank y'all members so much. 23 people in here. 12 thumbs up. Thank you. We are just uh, chit-chatting away before we get into our lesson. I usually like to give a few minutes for everyone to get on in here, get their coffee going. Good morning, Tundra Jason. Let's see. Linda Nichols is in the house. Good morning. She uh, she was in there. She knows what's going on, don't she, uh, Linda? So Secrets for the members. <laughs> we love everyone, not just the members, but I had I wanted to do that specifically for the members because they go out of their way. They don't have to do they don't have to have to do a membership. And, you know, I, I put out a few videos here and there and uh, you get the emojis and stuff. But uh, 
I, I want to just do a, a you know a small group live with them just to uh, give them a little heads up on some some things around here and just have a little fun with them but i'll have fun with you guys too i promise i promise hedgehogs homestead good morning everyone hope you're doing well as well tim tiny tim posey good morning good morning well y'all remember last week we talked about sinner yet saved sinner yet saved and a, a lot of controversy imagine that imagine that lila newton oh you're so welcome a lot of farm and hvac good morning a lot of controversy over that topic people are like some people were you know christians don't uh, sin um you know uh, it's not a sin once you've been saved it still goes against you know the wishes of god but you're you have to repent you know and, and and there's a little truth to what they were saying and the way they were saying it um but the the actions are still there and that's why we still have to repent good morning keith witty hope you're doing well from the uk so Yes, Christians still sin or do those actions. And uh, we have that, that spirit in us that tells us, okay, Tim, that was wrong. You need to repent. You need to come to come come to your knees and you need, you need, you need, you need not do that again. If you you know you need to strive every day to not do those things that you do. But today, today we're gonna get a little deeper in, a little deeper into what Christians do, what Christians do. On a daily basis. Y'all saw the thumbnail. That thumbnail was the world today, was it not? The thumbnail for this video was a tweet from Satan. Yes, t Satan has his own Twitter account. And uh, Satan said, you know, one sin will condemn you. So why not do a million and come to hell as a legend? And that's the world's philosophy nowadays, that they, they turn from Christ and they give straight in to an unredeeming spirit. An unredeeming spirit. Okay. But that's not what the Christian does. That's what the world does. Okay. Keith says we all sin as we are born with sin. That's why we confess and ask God to forgive us. Absolutely, brother. So, but the Christian doesn't give over to a reprobate mind. We have the spirit of God in us. But yet we sin. We talked about that last week. So today we're going to go over eight sins. That most Christians, I want to say most, I'm not going to say all, I want to say most Christians do. And I, I'd almost go to say all in some form or fashion. And some people last week didn't like me saying working too much was a sin. Or eating an extra piece of apple pie. Or uh, name any of those other things that a lot of people find as pleasurable, but not against God. Well, it's kind of like water. Water is needed. You don't have water for three days. You're gone. You know what I'm saying? You got to have water. But what happens when you drink too much water? You actually get water intoxication and you can die. Yes, you can die from water intoxication. Your brain gets all wishy-washy and then you just blue pad. You're just gone. You die. I know uh, Tom and Rhonda, if they're still in here, they'll tell you about it. It's possible. A lot of runners, marathon runners and stuff, you know, they run, 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 and they go in, they drink too much water, they pass out, and you can die from water intoxication. So, same thing with apple pie, same thing with working too much, same thing with seeking things of that nature. So, we're going to look at eight things today, eight things today that most Christians continue to do that are sins and we'll and i'm gonna back every single one of them every single one of them with tons of scripture tons of scripture okay three or four verses at least backing that up uh hedgehogs homestead says doing too much of those two things separates us from god what what is a sin that which separates you from god goes against his wishes for your life separation from god Man, you can't you can't get any uh, more defined than that. Diane Phoenix, what of those who continue to sin knowingly or ask uh, such about it? His answer was, I know it's wrong, but I'm having too much fun. OK. All right. Uh, yes. Can a Christian 
willingly and knowingly sin against God and then not really want to give it up. It's so easy to say, oh, no, they're not saved. We must not judge someone's salvation ever. Please never judge someone's salvation. You can judge their actions, as God has said, but don't judge their salvation. And the reason I say that is, do you knowingly go back over and over and over for that second piece of pie? Do you knowingly over and over work 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week, when really, you know, work is not requiring it? Work's not requiring you to work 90 hours a week in some situations. You want the extra money to save for that trip to Cancun. Do you see where I'm going with that? We knowingly, knowingly repeat these sins. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's so easy to, to, to look at adultery or fornication or uh, murder, those type of things. People that commit those repeatedly, you know. But when we talk about the simple sins, ooh, simple sins. Oh, Tim, you're getting into it. Um, Tom Aranda says, yes, we work a sinful amount. And Tom Aranda doesn't have to be sinful. You know, um, if your work is a type of work like a fireman, a, a nurse, a police officer, um, steel workers. I mean, there's so many professions that just require that lifestyle. And that's, you know, that's what you're in. Sometimes we choose, sometimes we choose the extra hours and the reasons behind those choices are where we get into it. So it's not, it's money is not a sin. Work is not a sin. Food is not a sin. Sugar is not a sin. Cigarette, the nicotine is not a sin. It's what we do with all those things. Alcohol is not a sin. It's what we do with it. A drunkard is over and over. Is, uh, reprimanded in the Bible. Now, if you fail once or twice, and you know it's not something you typically do, and you repent, you're you're a Christian. That's what Christians do. We fail short of the glory of God. We fall and fail short of the glory of God. But like was said earlier, we must repent. We must acknowledge that what we're doing is wrong, and try try within humanly bounds to do better, to be more like Christ. So. Today's going to be a good one, I think. I think I think you'll enjoy it. Freezerbound Outdoors. Hey, everyone stopped in to hit the thumbs up. Got to check the chicken. Check the chickens, brother. Uh, let's see. Midwest Duck Slayer. Good morning. No problem. Bama Outdoors. I oh, probably missed a few more people coming in here. I do apologize. We hadn't quite got started yet. Uh, let's see. Um, whoa. Keith Whitty's grandfather died of water intoxication. There you go. Two weeks. Of, see? It, it happens. It happens, everybody. All right. So today's lesson, eight of the sins that Christians seem to repeat, that seem to hold on to in our lives. And guys, we're going to step on some toes right off the beginning here. 33 people in here, 21 thumbs up. Thank you very much. We're going to step on some toes right at the beginning, talking about selfishness and self-righteousness. Which one of you wants to say you're selfish? Which one of you wants to say you're full of yourself? Self-righteous. Ask anyone that knows me. Ask my family. Ask my wife. Ask my mom. Ask my kids. Ask my co-workers. Selfishness and self-righteousness. You're like, Tim, how can we don't we don't see you as selfish and so you give so much for other people? And that's the duality of sin. That's the duality of sin. You can be a sinner and be a Christian. You can be a sinner and be a lost person. You can be a lost person and do good things. You can be a Christian and do good things. That's the duality of this. God, God didn't make it um, a super delineated process where not Christian, sinner. Christian, oh, never sin again. Free will continues on and that's where that's where we're tested by the spirit that's where we're tested by the spirit do we fail yes 
Do I fail? Yes. Selfishness and self-righteousness. Stephen Carlson, good morning. How often did Jesus call out the Pharisees in the New Testament? All the time. He called them out all the time. The Pharisees, the Sadducees called them out. And it was always for self-righteousness and selfishness. Imagine that. The Pharisees. If you have to compliment yourself on something you've done, you're not doing it right. You have to compliment yourself on something you've done. You're not doing it right. And I am guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. So many of us. I'm stepping on toes right from the beginning, guys. I apologize. So many of us like to display our faithful acts so that others will know what good Christians we are. Look at how good a person I am. I am so righteous. Christ doesn't care. Jesus doesn't care what everyone else thinks of your generosity. He doesn't. He doesn't care what anyone thinks of your generosity. Cares about your heart. Cares about your motivation. If you need other, if you need other people to know about the good things you do, you, the good things you feel, the good things you think, in order to feel validated, you need to reevaluate. Yes, Lila. Prayer requests, please post them. We'll lift them up. In the replay, we'll definitely go back and watch any we missed. Can't go to heaven through good deeds, brother, sister, Tom Rhonda. Thank you. So what's some verses? What's some Bible verses? This is an easy one, right? Everyone knows that selfishness and self-righteousness is a sin. The Bible verses that tell us, that, re, that reconfirm our commitment to not be selfish, to not be self-righteous. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Philippians 2.3, right there. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. 1 Corinthians 10.24, amen? Love is patient. You all know this one. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5. You all know that one. Don't be boastful. Don't be prideful. Don't be self-seeking. Don't dishonor others in that. Do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards, standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. Don't deceive yourselves. You're nothing special. Short of the glory of God, you're nothing special. Good morning, free handly made. Short of the glory of God, the spirit in you, you're nothing special. Yet you are special to God. He knows every hair on your head from the moment you were conceived. And you are special. <clears throat> Don't go around walking and talking like you're the second coming of Christ. Because on this earth, you're nothing special. Yet God saw you as special enough to send his only son. To die on the cross for the sins you have done and the sins you will do. In that sense, you are special. And don't forget that. The only special in us is what God saw and he gave enough to give us the gift of the Spirit. Amen. Come on. Patriotism. Patriotism. Tim. You already got us. You already got us with selfishness and self-righteousness. Now you're going to hit on my patriotism? What? I'm losing people. Come on. You're like, no, Tim. Come on. Patriotism. 
think about it more as nationalism. Okay, there's a little difference there between patriotism and nationalism. But anything, just like our water, just like our water can become sinful. Too much water can kill you. When you start placing patriotism before your Christianity, when you start placing nationalism above the the wonderful commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor. We have to be careful. These are sins that Christians do every day. Selfishness, self-righteousness. And now, yeah, Keith Whitty. Now we're getting at patriotism and nationalism. And I, this one's a hard one for me. There's my military. I was in I was in the Navy, right? I got a Navy tattoo right here. See, see the anchor? I, I, I am a patriot. Love my country. Love my country. And for the record, I do not think patriotism in and of itself is a sin. I do not. Come on. I put this here because all too often we put faith and Christian values in the same box as political parties and patriotism. We do. We do. We do. The Bible is clear, though. Jesus' name will be declared to all nations, to all peoples of the world. We shout America. I, I shout America all the time and talk about how much better we are as a nation than other ones. I do it. Man, I believe it. But that's not biblical. We project Christianity onto our beautiful American flag. We do. And I believe we're a Christian nation born of Christian values. But brothers and sisters, the Christian flag, the American flag. Whew, tip stepping on some toes. We project Christianity on the American flag and assume that God acts American. We assume God is an American. That's not how it works. Celebrate American values. Amen. Understand how blessed we are to live in this country. But remember, at the end of the day, we're citizens of heaven. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. And heaven will be full of people from all over the world. Hedgehog says, uh, step on the toe, patriots, and a lot of people get too focused on that and very angry. Let God do the yes. Hopefully I'm, hopefully, I'm portraying this in a Christian light. Thank you, Stephen Carlson. Thank you, Keith. Yeah, hopefully, I'm projecting this in a Christian light based on biblical sound teachings. Biblical sound teach. I, 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 I am American, true and true. Love my country. Don't anybody say otherwise. Don't anybody say otherwise. I'll fight for it. I will fight for this country. And that's biblical. Philippians 3.20. But our, citizens, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. We're dual citizens. We are dual citizens. While on this earth, we're Americans or, or Britons or uh, Australians or Canadians. We've got, a, we've got all those countries in here to, not today and Texans, too. Love us some Texans. But we're dual citizens. We have dual citizenship. We pledge our allegiance to the American flag, to the Australian flag, to the Canadian flag, to the British flag. But we pledge our allegiance to God. To God. Tom and Rhonda, too many people in power say they are doing things in God's name when their motivations are selfish. It's so obvious and painful to watch. That's the first ones, wasn't it? Selfishness, self-righteousness, and patriotism. Politicians use those all the time. Tandera, Australia. 
Love my Aussie friends. Huh? Did y'all see my uh, Aussie special last Thursday? That was so much fun. Oh my gosh. If you didn't watch that Thursday Aussie special with all my Aussie friends, go back. That was so fun. Off the topic. Sorry. So fun. Uh, Lila says, me as well, Tim. I'll fight for our country as well as fight to keep the Lord in my life. Amen. John 18, 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would all be fighting that I might not be delivered over to Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world, from this world. Jesus tells us his kingdom is not of this world. Psalms 33, 12 through 22. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all his children of man. From where he sits in throne, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashioned the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. God is. Jesus is the Lord of all nations. And our citizenship is in heaven. Stephen Carlson, thou shalt not have no other God before me. Amen. Diane Phoenix, I am reading the American Covenant, which talks about the faith of the men who founded our nation. Yes, I truly believe we are based, our country was based on Christian values. Not all the not all the founders were Christians, but they based their, their, their uh, creation of our country on Christian values. Many were Christian. Some were deists. Uh, I've done a lot of study on this as well. And I, I love, I love our Christian heritage as Americans. Do you know Harvard? Guys, a little off the subject. Did you know Harvard? Yes. Harvard University? Harvard College? It was a Christian school. It taught Christian philosophy. It taught Christian principles. It was a Christian school. And look where it's at today. Most, most, there's all but one, guys, all but one of the Ivy League schools was Christian. Was, well, let me rephrase, was, yeah, Christian. I can't go any deeper than that. I mean, they were all theological based schools. For Christian religious principles. All of them but one. All of the Ivy League schools. So we've, we've touched on selfishness and self-righteousness. We've, we've hit on patriotism. Now the one all of us do. All of us. Fear and worry. Fear, worry, and anxiety. Fear, worry, anxiety. Good morning, Mark and Debbie, two old people on the couch. Fear and anxiety. Fear and worry. I mean, it's not something you say we always do, but we all do it. In some place, in some time, we do it. Do you worry about your kids Graduating high school and what they're going to do with their lives. Do you worry about them going to school and be influenced by <clears throat> drugs and alcohol, by sex and a, a reprobate mind, by television and video games? Do you worry? Do you fear? Do you have anxious moments? Are you anxious about the future? Are you anxious about getting sick? Are you anxious about your financial situation? Are you do you worry about? Your parents, your grandparents, or the state of the nation, the economy, the, the, the world. Do you worry? Do you have fear? Do you have anxiety? Jesus is very clear about worrying everyone. Lou Hant, good morning. Carpenter Self-Reliance. Jesus is very clear about worrying. He flat out tells us not to worry. Knowing we'll fail. Faith requires trust. 1 John 4.18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. God is love. God is love. He loved us enough, so much, he sent his son to die to atone for our sins. His love is perfect. 
Therefore, we should have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. I know fear and worry is inevitable sometimes, though. Mike Mimty Home says, says Roman 13 talks about obeying the law of the land so doesn't patriotism work hard uh, hand in hand as God allows the government to be. Absolutely. We are to follow the authorities set up by godly kingdoms, whether they do right or do wrong in his name, just like the judges that were set place. We are to follow them. We are to uh, be a, we are to fight for those nations. Just as the, the men and women fought for Israel, but our kingdom is in heaven and we should never put our country above God. American, the, the Christian flag, the American flag, your state flag. I follow you, Mr. T. Mike, empty homestead. Love you, man. No, I follow you 100% there. Patriotism is a virtue. Nationalism, placing the nation above your Christianity, above all else, is not. So worry, fear, anxiety is a struggle for me as well. We are not perfect, but fear and worry are not part of the equation with Christ. No, there's no fear and there's no worry in his kingdom. These attitudes imply a lack of faith. Oh, Tim, you're saying I'm not full of faith? All we can do is remember that God is sovereign and in control. The, the most worry-free, anxiety-free, fear-free I've been is when I've let God have control. Well, he's let me have control and when I give it over to him. When I watched my grandpa pass away, Parkinson's disease, and he had surgeries to, to remedy it. I watched my grandpa pass away, and there was no fear in my mind. There was no anxiety. There was no worry. I knew my grandpa was going to heaven. He would be with Christ in paradise. No fear, no worry. Starla came down with, you know, afflicted with cancer. No fear, no worry, no anxiety. I have concern. And uh, love. But God's got this. And Starla has the power through Christ in her. I know she does. I know she does. I just found out, and my sister's made it public, my sister has cancer. My sister. And I know she's, I know she's got this through the power and glory of Christ. No matter what happens, I pray that she doesn't have fear, she doesn't have worry, she doesn't have anxiety. Because it, it can turn you inside out. It can turn you inside out. Guys, we're talking about eight sins that Christians do. And worry, fear, and anxiety. God says don't worry. Have faith. Don't worry. Have faith. Thank you for the prayers. I appreciate that. K62, good morning. Others that came in while I wasn't, while I was talking, I apologize. Good morning. So what's the verses on fear, anxiety, and worry? Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Psalm 56.3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So we will be afraid. But we can f we can f push aside fear, worry, and anxiety with faith, love, glory, and grace with the mercy of Jesus Christ. Thank you all. Appreciate the prayers. Second Timothy 1.7 for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We humans, our spirit, full of fear, full of sinful nature. But the spirit we were given is not a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of power, 
spirit of love, a spirit of self-control. There's where our self-control, the Old Testament, they had the law. We talked last week, the law condemned them for their sins, made them aware. But now we have the Holy Spirit, the New Testament, the New Covenant. The law is in us and gives us strength to overcome fear, worry, and anxiety. Have faith, people. Have faith. Please, please have faith. Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who come who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. You want Linda Wall watching the way Jimmy Houston is and handled his wife, Chris's stroke, is a good example of giving over to God, blessing and prayers for your sister. Thank you very much, Linda. Yes, we have to give it over to God. That's really the only choice is to fail and fall or give it over to God. Thank you, Hedgehog Homestead. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. I sought, I sought, I sought the Lord. He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Woo! That's all we asked for, right? There's your answer. If you're feeling fear, if you're feeling worry, if you're feeling anxiety, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. A little pop up here, sorry. Lobo Reyes, good morning. Tom Aranda says, we never know what people are dealing with while we are interacting with them. That's why we need to be humble, kind, patient, and loving to each other. You never know. You never know. You never know. All right, guys, we've dealt with fear and worry and anxiety. Let's flip that. Let's flip that pride. We separated pride from self-righteousness and selfishness. Two separate things, really. We need to talk about them together, but pride. Is it okay to be proud? I'm proud of my country. I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of my wife. I'm proud of the, the ridge, the property, the log home. I'm proud of it. What have I done? What have I done to be proud of? What is pride? We talk about pride all the time in church. We constantly discuss how detrimental and dangerous it is, but it seems like we don't recognize it, what pride actually is, because we say and do it all the time. We go to church and say, oh, you shouldn't have the pride, you know, blah, blah. We don't realize every time we refuse someone's forgiveness, we are acting in pride. Okay, now, now I'm starting to understand. When you refuse someone's forgiveness, you're putting yourself above God. Every time you argue with a friend or a family member or spouse and insist that you will not be the one to apologize first, you act in pride. Remember that the grace that Christ extends to you and try to extend that grace and forgiveness to others. There's pride there. There's pride. Don't be prideful in that manner. Don't be prideful in that manner. Time to switch over to the other coffee cup. Woo, yeah. Hot coffee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get this going. Don't be prideful in that manner. Proverbs 11.2. When pride comes... Then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Humble is wisdom. Jean Ackland, good morning. Diane, good morning. Lobo Reyes. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You see it all the time. People get all prideful. Pound that chest. And then they're, in the, then they're in the gutter. Then they're in the gutter. Put you in your place. Proverbs 29, 23. One's pride will bring him low, the gutter. But he who is lowly in spirit 
will obtain honor. Don't place yourself above, above others. Don't be prideful to the point where your spirit isn't set free. You harness your spirit. You, you corral your spirit when you show pride. Carla Ritchie, good morning. James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Proverbs 16, 5, everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. Enough with pride, huh? Push it aside. Push it aside. Woo. Hitting hard today, aren't we, guys? Hitting hard. Wait till you hear this next one. Gluttony and coveting. Put them together. I put them together. Gluttony and coveting. Too much of a good thing, people. For the wrong reasons. Why do you store up riches on earth when your treasure is in heaven? Why do we store up all this stuff when our treasure is in heaven? Is that one piece of pie after the meal going to satisfy? If it doesn't satisfy you, you need to look at where your satisfaction comes from. Gluttony and coveting. This sin is, 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 in a way, related to pride. We bury ourselves in debt in order to make sure we have the best and newest things. Now, the disciples, they often lived off the gener generosity of others. And Jesus was a poor carpenter. I'm not saying that wealth is inherently bad. It's not. If you can afford, if you if you can afford a Lamborghini, have a Lamborghini. But if you can't, if you're spending hundreds of dollars each month paying off debt, then you could be committing a modern form of covetousness. You need to look inside yourself, search your heart. If your nice things were taken away today, would you still be satisfied? Would you would you be able to find joy? Or is your joy in Christ and the rest of the things around us are just blessings? Why are you in debt? Why are you really in debt? Are you in debt because you need that? Who are you trying to impress? God or men? Damn, you're so mean today. Why are you hitting us Christians so hard? We're on five. We've got three more to go. You're, and you're hitting us hard with these things, Tim. Why are you so mean? Tim's so mean. He's just pushing everybody away today. You'd have 500 people in this chat if you would just be nicer. You know, talk about the good things in the Bible, Tim. Talk about how we're all blessed. We're all going to heaven, streets of gold, mansions. Talk about, for you know, we're all forgiven and we can all just live happy and free and, and smiles and joy. I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Ah, down in my heart. Woo! Butterfly and roses, everybody. That's what Christianity is, butterfly and roses. No, no, it's not. We are guaranteed struggle and strife. YouTube channel named after that. We are guaranteed struggle and strife. Exodus 2017. You shall not covers covet. Ugh, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. That big up jack, that big old jacked up nice F-250. 
Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about his house. Don't worry about his, his job, his success, his toys. Don't worry about that. Don't covet. Don't covet. Good morning, Josh, Porter Valley Ranch. Don't covet. Love you, everyone, in Jesus' name. I feel the Holy Spirit in my heart this morning. Good, awesome, Lobo Reyes. People don't realize they covet absolutely gender. People don't realize it. But that's what we're doing today. We're stepping on toes in a loving way. 1 Timothy 6.20 For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. It is, it is, it is, it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. That's ESV translation. I don't, I don't care for that one as well. But that's for the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Money is not an evil thing. Cigarettes are not an evil thing. Alcohol is not an evil thing. It's the action that we do with those items that make them a sin. Gluttony, coveting, something Christians do. We do, we do, we do, we do. Romans 13, 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Ephesians 5, 3. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. It is put, covetousness is put together with sexual immorality and impurity. Covetousness. Right together. Do we covet? Are we gluttonous? Do we overindulge in things which we cannot afford? Or really have no purpose for. Luke 22, 15. And he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Amen. Tim, you're just not a nice person today. You're just hitting me on all sides. Wait till you hear the next one. We're on sixth of eight. I gotta hurry up here. We only got like 15 minutes left. We're on six of eight. Gossip. 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 I'm from the South. And there's an unspoken rule that says you can say whatever you want about someone as long as you follow with bless their heart. Do you see how fats um Sandy's getting, bless her heart. Do you see how so-and-so did so-and-so? Bless his heart. That's right. That's right. Good morning, downtown 66. People get confused by that. It's the words that convicting, not you, Tim. Oh, yeah. Corey and Cynthia. Gossip. I'm as guilty as anyone. I mean, YouTube, we talk, right? We talk. We talk about Jared Crocker. We talk about Jason Crocker. We talk about pick somebody. We talk. We talk about other people's lives as if we live in their heads and know everything about them. Jason Crocker has to deal with this every day. People think they know what's in his head and what's in his heart. Pick somebody. Pick your favorite YouTuber. We do that, don't we? We do that with Josh. Josh Porter. Josh Josh has dealt with it. Haven't you, Josh? I've dealt with it. We've dealt with it. This is something churchy people are constantly accused of. And it's often the result of a judgmental attitude. Why won't the woman 
who had an abortion come to your church? Because she's afraid of the looks you'll give her and the distance which you'll keep her. The same can be said for the pregnant 16-year-old or the man who cheated on his wife. Sure, it's nice to escape our own issues by talking about someone else's for a while, but let's try to remember, speak with grace. And that our sin is just as sinful as anyone else's. Come on. Amen. We cannot push people away. Love your neighbor, your sinful neighbor, as we are sinners ourselves. Proverbs 16.28. A dishonest man spreads strife and a whisperer separates close friends. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good is for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Amen. Proverbs 11.13, whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps things covered. Jason, good morning. Jesus, I'll come out. I'll come out of the shadows for that one. Proverbs twenty six twenty. For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases. Free Hanley May says, uh, "True, we left the church because we were judged as parents because our oldest daughter was caught up in drugs. Didn't matter that we were all doing what we could to help her. Oh my gosh, that's terrible." Don't throw stones in glass houses, absolutely. Tom Rana, God brought a person back into Tom's life recently. He is 36, but he was 10 when Tom picked him up on the ambulance with a broken leg. Tom was in shock. Tom still had his letter saying God sent an angel. Wow. Wow. I'm going to read this one again. For the lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisper, quarreling ceases. Who stirs the pot? Who stokes the fire? Are you a stoker? Do you stir the pot? I did. Gotta stop. Gotta stop. Leviticus 19.16, you shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. Amen. All right. I got two left, guys. Two left. I'll get this done. Hatred. Tim, I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater, so I don't have to deal with this one. I, I love, I love, I love. I'm not a hater. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us what we already know, that murder is wrong. But he follows that up just by saying that anyone who has harbored hatred towards someone has committed murder in his heart. What? Hatred is connected intimately with fear. We talked about earlier. We fear people we don't understand, and that fear causes us to hate them irrationally. The general attitude towards Muslims is based on the acts of a group. We hate a people because of it. 9-11 was a terrible, terrible thing. And we hate them for it. Don't we? We hate them. We hate the whole religion because of what those people did. Regardless of they if that, that sect is is divergent from the main group or not. We hate them. We hate them. We also tend to harbor hatred against those who have hurt us. We don't forgive. We constantly need to be searching our heart and monitoring our thoughts and our feelings for this hatred that seems almost natural. We think it's okay to hate. There's no... There's one person in this world that's allowed to hate, and that's God. The one who is love is the only one allows to hate, and he hates sin. He hates sin, and hatred in us is a sin. Hatred in us is a sin. 
1 John 4, 20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has been, who has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. You're a liar. 1 John 2, 9, whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in the darkness. Proverbs 10, 12, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Matthew 6, 15, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. Forgive those you hate. Put hate aside. Find a way to love. You don't have to forget. Never forget 9-11. Never forget 9-11. But put aside the hate. Don't forget. Don't let it happen again. Keep our guard. We will not let that happen again. But don't hate. Forgive. But don't forget. That's biblical. Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Proverbs 26, 24 through 26. Whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred be covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. 1 John 2.11, but whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Don't be blinded by hatred. It will, it will separate you from God. Your hatred will separate you from God. It won't cause you to lose your salvation, but it will separate you from God and you will fall into the sin of hatred. I have stepped on so many toes today. I'm surprised there's 40 people in here. I really am because my toes... I'm barefoot right now. I got my, I'm not quite ready for church. I got to change shirts and everything. My toes hurt. My toes hurt. Simply Southern Roots, good morning. All right, the final, the final one. The final one. Judgment. The sin of judgment. Oh my gosh, if I've not heard enough of that in the last several Sunday lessons from the Ridge. Papert Homestead, good morning. Don't be blind and trust. Don't forget. That's right. Don't forget. You don't have to, you forgive, but you don't forget. That's what, right, Lou Hant? You don't, you don't trust people that have done you wrong. You can forgive them, but you don't forget what they've done. They need to atone for their sins. Thank you, Lila. Judgment. Are Christians judges? God gave us judges. We asked for judges. There's the book of judges. And man, did it not work out for us. We asked for judges. God gave us judges. And judges did not do well for humanity. There is one judge. This one is a kicker. It is. It is the kicker. This one is the kicker for us. This is what will be the death of our faith and our influence as a Christian. The, the, the Great Commission, this is what will kill our Great Commission is judgment. I know that Paul tells the churches to expel sinners from their midst. He, he encourages us not to indulge in someone's sinful behavior. We use those verses to justly judge others and others' salvations. And I believe this is a gross misinterpretation of Scripture. I really do. You do not run with sinners and partake in their sin. But oh my gosh, did Jesus love sinners? And he didn't, he, he came to them, he came to the well, he came, he went to the tax collector, he went, he went, he went. The truth is, Jesus is our equality. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. Christians have, has, have accepted Christ, and we, we've avoided condemnation based on our faith, and by the grace of God, we are saved. We do not avoid condemnation based on our own actions. Every time we think less of someone else, we forget that we also are sinners. 
The only way to avoid sin is to acknowledge our own weakness and embrace humility. In fact, that in itself could help us avoid a multitude of sins like the eight we've talked about today. Good morning, Evelyn Newman. Don't judge, lest ye be judged. Matthew 7, 1 through 29. Judge not that you be judged not. For with judgment you will pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But you do not notice the log that is in your own. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Address our own sins. When you see someone smoking, overeating, working too hard. See, we don't, we don't pick those. When you see someone committing adultery, stealing on drugs, it's so easy to judge. It's so easy to judge. Yet we've got eight. We've got eight judgments against us right here. Eight. I guarantee almost all of us do all eight of these. James 2.13. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Romans 14, 12 through 13. So then each of us will give account of himself to God. Therefore, let none of us pass judgment on another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. When you judge and don't forgive and don't love on, you put a stumbling block on them coming to Christ. It will kill our faith, the way we're perceived by others, and it will kill our commission. Thank you, Morgan's Happy Place. Luke 6, 37, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Romans 14, 10 through 12, why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God, not to you. Not to you, not to me, to God. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes. Who will bring the light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart? Then each one will receive his condemnation before God. There is a time for judgment, and it's not now, and it's not with you. I'm going to finish up with one verse. I'm going to finish up with one verse. I know it's we're just in an hour. I'm going to finish up with one verse. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. This is so powerful. We all need to pray about what it means. This is when, this is the deep, the deep part of Christianity. Because a lot of people skip over Revelation. Not Revelations, Revelation. A lot of people skip over because we just don't understand it. But I pray that you read or listen and you pray for discernment. You pray for clarity. You pray for understanding. Then I saw a great white horse. I'm sorry. Let me start over. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then the death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Don't judge people. There's a time and place for judgment. It's not with you. You do not have that authority. God gave us judges at one time. Go back and read how that ended. Go back and read what happened during the time of the judges. Okay? I stepped on so many toes, I apologize. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't apologize. I ask for forgiveness. No, I don't. Reading the word of God. Don't be, don't, don't. Never be shameful of the word. But one of the only times you can be proud. Because you were unworthy and God loved you. You were unworthy and God died for you. His son died for you. And you are special. You are special in that recent, that sense. You are special. Special to me. You're special to a lot of people. And if you don't think you're special, read your Bible and you'll find out how special you really, really are. Thank you all so much. I know we just went over an hour and I got to finish getting ready for church. I hope uh, you all have a continue to have a wonderful, blessed, fun weekend full of the spirit, full of love and friendship. And you can think about these eight sins as you go about your day and uh, hopefully put them, put them aside. It's possible. You can pray for forgiveness, pray for repentance, put them aside. Thank you, Lila. Pafford Homestead, I hope you are doing well. Evelyn Newman, thank you very much. Appreciate uh, Diane Phoenix for being here. Appreciate you. Carla Ritchie. No worries, no worries. That's right. Grumpy Grandpa, thank you. Emma, Sunny's Place, love you. Farm and HVAC, you have a great day. Hedgehog Homestead, you are so welcome. I appreciate you for being here. Corey and Cynthia, thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. Lou Hant, appreciate you. Mm -mm -mm. Well, guys, it is that time. Can I finish getting ready? Uh, make sure you tell Jason from Homestead, North Michigan. Tim looks off, awful good in that uh, that shirt. <laughs> I think there was a little bit of self righteous in there. Nah. Uh, yes, Tom and Rhonda, that's so right. Cindy Brown, you have a wonderful day. Homestead Aquarius, thank you so much. Linda, love you. You take care. Appreciate you. Uh, Evelyn, you do as well. Have a wonderful day. All right, guys, it is time to go. So until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridge Life.